my first time at this park. I think I'm coming back. <laughs> okay. So we dealt with Aristotle square of opposition. And, you know, you notice with those, we just, you know, we had the subject and the predicate as four different kinds of categoricals, and we looked at the truth relationships between them. All right, but it's always, always, always the same subject, the same predicate. All right. The next three, we're going to kind of mess things around a little bit. Uh, the conversion, first we're going to deal with conversion. Conversion of a categorical is when you leave the quantifier alone, you leave the copular alone, and you just simply take the subject and the predicate and switch places. So the conversion of uh, all, you know, so we'll, we'll let S stand for the subject category, and we'll let P stand for the predicate category. So the conversion of all SRP, the universal affirmative, the conversion of all SRP is all PRS. The conversion of the particular affirmative, uh, some SRP is some PRS. The conversion of the I, and by the way, <laughs> uh, the conversion of the universal negative, no SRP is no PRS. And the conversion of some SRP, uh, some S are not P, the particular negative, is some P are not S. Okay. It's time to introduce a new concept, logical equivalence. Now, earlier we talked about deductive uh, inference as you know, pretty much an inference or, or, uh, from premise to conclusion. So a uh, valid, deduct deductive, deductively valid inference is where the truth of the premises guarantees the truth of the conclusion. And that's good, right? That, that's good as far as it goes. Logical equivalence is when that inference, that valid inference, runs from premise to conclusion and from conclusion to premise. The truth of the premise guarantees the truth of the conclusion and the truth of the conclusion guarantees the truth of the premise. Consequently, these propositions have the exact same truth values. So we have deductive validity, where the truth of the premises guarantees the truth of the conclusion. Logical equivalence is when that validity runs from the premise to the conclusion and from the conclusion to the premise. So looking at one of these conversions, no SRP, well, let's try an example. Uh, no dogs are reptiles. Well, that infers that no reptiles are dogs. So the, the categorical claims that the subject predicate is not included, excuse me, the subject category is not included in the predicate category. They're apart, right? <laughs> well, uh, if, if uh, no dogs, if dogs are not included in the predicate category of reptile, well, then the predicate category of reptile, now the subject, is not included in dogs. So that conversion we have a deductively valid inference from uh, 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 from uh, the universal negative to its conversion. Similarly, from the conversion, we can also infer the first sub the first category we looked at, or the first universal negative, no, that reptiles are not included in the predicate category of dog. Well, that infers that dogs are not included in the predicate category of reptiles. Okay, so these two propositions invalidly infer each other. They are logical equivalent. Look at the particular affirmative, some SRP. So some dog is a mammal, well, validly infers that some mammal is a dog. <laughs> I mean, this seems kind of silly even saying it out loud, but this is what's going on, right? That there's at least some members of dog included in the predicate category, well, that infers right, that at least some of the predicate category has at least one member that, that that's a dog, right? Uh, and that conversion also validly infers the, the first particular affirmative that we looked at. So these two propositions validly infer one another. They are logically equivalent. Well, let's look at the universal affirmative. All dogs are mammals. That is true, that all dogs are mammals. The conversion of the universal affirmative, all mammals are dogs, is false. So the conversion of the universal affirmative is not deductively valid. All right, we do not get to automatically infer the conversion of the universal affirmative. The particular negative. Right? 
uh, is also not a valid, the conversion of the particular negative is also not a valid conversion. So some mammals are not dogs. That's true. Right? Some mammals are not dogs, namely cats. But the conversion that some dogs are not mammals, that's false. Okay. So that's conversion. Conversion is pretty simple. You switch places with the subject and the predicate. Only the universal negative and only the uh, particular affirmative are valid conversions. Right? The other two are not valid. And, and to show that they're not valid, we provide a counterexample. And a counterexample is using the same argument form where you have a true premise or premises and a false conclusion. And we show that with the universal affirmative. All dogs are mammals, that's true. To all mammals are dogs, that's false. The premise is true. The conclusion is false. That means it's not deductively valid. The truth of the premises does not guarantee the truth of the conclusion. Same thing with the particular negative. Some mammals are not dogs. That is true. The conversion, some dogs are not mammals, is false. That is So that's not deductively valid. All right. So that's conversion. Let's look at some more. Aversion is a little bit different from conversion. And to explain aversion, I need to introduce a new concept. The concept is the complementary category. So the complementary category of a category is everything else besides what's in that category. So the complementary category of dog is everything else besides a dog. The complementary category of tree is everything else besides a tree. And the way we usually express this in English, anyway, is to put, uh, you know, one of the suffixes before that just kind of, you know, says not this. <laughs> so um, the complementary category of dogs is all non-dogs. The complementary category of trees is all non-trees. Right. Now, with the obversion, we're going to use this complementary category. With the obversion, you take the categorical, you leave the quantifier alone. You leave the subject alone. Right? Leave the quantifier alone, leave the subject alone. You take the copula. If the copula is an affirmative, turn it into a negative. If the copula is a negative, turn it into an affirmative. So if it's an is, turn it into an is not. If it's an is not, turn it into an is. If it's an R, turn it into an R not. If it's an R not, turn it into an R. <laughs> then you replace the predicate category with its complement category. So, practice with the uh, universal affirmative. All dogs are mammals. The odd version of this is all dogs are not non-mammals. All dogs are not non-mammals. Okay. Take the particular affirmative. Some dogs are mammals. Its obversion is some dogs are not non-mammals. Some dogs are not non-mammals. Okay. Take the universal negative. Right. No dogs are reptiles. Right. No dogs are reptiles. So we're leaving the quantifier alone. And we're changing the copula. Now... Don't don't get confused here, right? Because we've got we've got the uh, uh, we're changing it from the universal negative to the universal affirmative, right? So no dogs are reptiles is now all dogs are non reptiles. All dogs are non reptiles. Right? Particular negative. Some dogs are not reptiles turns into some dogs are non-reptiles. Some dogs are non-reptiles. Okay. Every aversion is deductively valid. Every aversion is deductively valid. Right? Now, if you'd like to try to disprove that, you're welcome to give it a shot. If you can come up with a counterexample for an aversion, I'll be impressed. So an aversion... Leave the uh, quantifier alone, leave the subject alone. 
reverse, right? Turn the <laughs> turn the uh, copula into its opposite. If it's an affirmative, turn it into a negative. If it's a negative, turn it into an affirmative. And then use the complement category for the predicate. Okay, one left. Okay, last one, contrapositive. For a contrapositive, this sounds a little odd. For a contrapositive, you leave the quantifier alone, you leave the copula alone. Right? You replace the subject category with a complementary predicate category. You replace the predicate category with the complement subject category. So, all dogs are mammals. Right? All dogs are mammals. Okay. That contrapositive is all non-mammals are non-dogs. All non-mammals are non-dogs. So let's see which of these categoricals are equivalent to their contrapositive. Let's start with the universal affirmative, all SRP. So for example, let's try all dogs are mammals. Well, does, what does that, uh, does that validly infer all non-mammals are non-dogs? Well, all dogs are uh, what all uh, what all dogs and mammals are saying is everything inside the subject category of dog is also included in the subject category of mammal. Well, then well, that that does mean that everything outside the subject category of of mammal. Okay, so we have the, the excuse me the complement category. Everything outside the complement category, everything <laughs> in the complement category of uh, of mammal, is also in the complement category. Of dog. So everything besides a mammal is also outside of dog. Okay, so that, that valid that inference does work. Well then let's try it the other way. So everything outside of mammal, uh, other than mammal, is also outside of dog. Well then that does mean, right, that everything that, that is a dog is also inside of mammal. So by saying you know, everything that's not a mammal is also not a dog. Right, well, that, that implies that everything that is a dog is a mammal. All right. So these two propositions do validly infer one another. The universal affirmative is logically equivalent to its contrapositive. Okay, well, let's try the particular negative. So some dog is not a reptile. Right. Well, that infers that there's something that's in the complement category of reptile, but that is not included in the complement category of dog. So there's something other than a reptile that is excluded from the complement of dog. Right? So yes, yeah, some dog is not a reptile. That does infer that some non-reptile is not a non-dog. Okay. Well, so let's try it the other way. Some non-reptile. So there's something in, you know, other than a reptile is not a non-dog. So it's excluded from uh, the complement category dog, or in other words, it's saying that's in the complement category, is that in the category of dog, right? To say that something is excluded from a complement category means that it's included in that category, right? Well, then that means that some dog is not a reptile. So these, so for the particular negative, right, it is logically equivalent to its contrapositive. Okay, All right, the two propositions validly infer one another. Well, that's two categoricals. Let's look at the other two. Let's take a look at no dogs or reptiles. Well, the contrapositive for no dogs or reptiles is no non-reptiles are non-dogs. So in other words, there's nothing outside, you know, there's nothing in the complement category of reptiles, right, that's also in the complement category of dogs. Right? But, you know, there's lots of things, right? <laughs> Cats, for instance. Um, Cats are both non-reptiles and non-dogs. So already, right away, the, uh, contra the contrapositive is not equivalent to the universal negative. Or I should say, the universal negative is not equivalent to its contrapositive, since the proposition doesn't infer uh, from the universal negative to the contrapositive. Let's look at the universe, uh, excuse me, particular affirmative. Uh, so we have, let's try this one, some mammal is a dog does not infer that some dog is a non-mammal. Well, now, that, you know, kind of looks like it might. <laughs> um, 
But, you know, you might just have to take my word on this because you know, what, what this is saying, right, is that, you know, since there's something that is a dog and a mammal, there's something that is not, that is neither a dog nor a mammal. And that, that kind of makes sense. But if you get your categories broad enough, right, uh, you're going to start inventing whole new categories of things. Right? If, you, if you're talking about something that is in the two broadest categories, uh, um, then you might have a, a third object that's just completely outside both. And you know, regardless, you're just simply saying, well, there's something that is a, you know, a, a dog and a mammal. Therefore, there's something that's neither, I'm not going to tell you what it is, it's just out there. Like, okay, that, that, that's not real helpful. So you know, for at least for now, just take my word for it that some dog is a mammal does not infer that some non-dog is a non-mammal. What about the other way? Some non-dog is a non-mammal, does not infer that some dog is a mammal. But now that looks like it really does, because it's obviously some dog is a mammal. But remember, what, what we're looking for is a counterexample. We're trying to figure out whether this form of inference is invalid. And this form of inference here is going from a contrapositive of a particular affirmative to the particular affirmative. Well, here's a contrapositive. Uh, some non-truck is a non-shark. That's true. There's things out there that are neither trucks nor sharks, but that does not mean we get to infer that some shark is a truck. So at the very least, at the very least, the contrapositive of a particular affirmative is does not infer the particular affirmative. So these two propositions do not validly infer one another, so they are not equivalent. Okay, there we go. Uh, for the homework, you'd be expected to not only identify which uh, inferences we make here, but uh, you'll be required to identify valid inferences versus invalid.